Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with my 30 week pregnancy update. So if you're new here, my name is Lindsay and I live in Italy, but I'm originally from Canada. And on my channel, I have been documenting my pregnancy journey. So if you want to follow along, uh, you can hit that subscribe button down below and make sure you've got the bell notification turned on so you don't miss any upcoming videos. So uh, my husband and I are expecting a baby girl uh, on September the 23rd, so a couple more months left. So I'll start off with basically a quick overview of the symptoms that I kind of seem to have every week. <laughs> Still had some issues with diarrhea, the pelvic girdle pain that I was mentioning in my video last week where kind of down in the uh, pelvis and also sometimes especially on the left side like up to my hip it's just very sore, tender to the touch. Last week I mentioned like Basically, I get like a burning sensation on my left side if I am standing for too long. And I started to notice that it's also kind of right along the bottom of like my bump too, where probably it has something to do with just everything stretching, I think, right? The skin, the ligaments, everything. So that has definitely continued. I still had a few days this week where I was dealing with those cramps that I'm not really sure if they're like contractions or not. <laughs> Gassy, I was hungry, fatigued, peeing a lot. A couple days I woke up with a sore back. I did sleep really well a couple days and then other days I would constantly keep waking up through the night switching positions left to right. I can't seem to stay on my left or right side though. Like I always find myself on my back at some point, like unbelievable. So whenever I wake up, I try to <laughs> switch positions or you know how sometimes if you just cannot fall asleep in one position, then if that, if I really need to be on my back, then I'll just like slightly prop myself up on a pillow. But basically those are the symptoms which kind of carry on basically every week. They're, they weren't anything new. Uh, some new things this week. I did notice that I was like particularly thirsty recently and I drink a lot of water in the first place, but and it's probably got to do with the heat has suddenly come back up again too. The last couple days it just got really hot again. And one day this week I had a stuffy nose. So luckily this week, I don't know, they cut some of the grass around my house. <laughs> and the issue I had last week where I was like sneezing a ton totally went away this week. I just had that one day where I was kind of a bit stuffed up. But nothing crazy. So just to mention a few things on like some specific days, some new symptoms. I had mentioned before a, a couple weeks ago, I think that I had felt like dizzy one day. And last Wednesday, when I turned 30 weeks, I again, uh, well, I felt dizzy, but to backtrack for a minute, basically that day, I had gone to my hairstylist, right? And I got my hair cut, dyed, okay. But, you know, while I was there, I got like super dehydrated. Because, you know, I was there for like close to two hours, right? And in the hot sun, hot sun, well, not in the hot sun, but <laughs> in the hot summer. And it was kind of warm in the hairstylist. And to be honest, I actually felt a bit nauseous at a certain point in the beginning, like when they first started putting on my hair dye, like I actually was kind of like concerned that I was gonna have to like find a washroom. And I had brought one of my baby books that I am reading from the library. And it's this one called, it's by this Georgia Kotza named, what is the title? Uh, it's like baby at no cost basically, but obviously it's in Italian anyway And I closed the book because I just 
I felt like I needed to just kind of concentrate on like getting rid of this nausea and luckily it did pass but like I was literally about to see like could you open the door because like I don't feel well and you know to be honest I'm pretty sure that happened the last appointment that I went to as well like seven weeks ago it's probably the fumes I think anyway luckily it did pass but when I got home, I spent the whole day trying to rehydrate for one. And in the afternoon, I went out um, and I had a fall at the library. So basically, this part of the day happened after my last update. So because if you go back to my 29-week update, basically, I was looking, you know, pretty like, awake and everything and fine I was totally fine but for whatever reason when I went out to the local library I had a few errands to do that afternoon I crossed the road and I like just literally fell onto the sidewalk kind of sideways my I scraped up my hands and my left knee and luckily nothing to do with my belly was involved that was a relief but you know I, and then I walk in the library and the first thing they're like oh please sanitize your hands and I'm like I've got like blood in my hands and like rocks they're like oh I'm like okay I did but like kind of on the edge because I'm like Gosh, that's uh, gonna sting anyway I did call the hospital and just kind of ask if they thought that I should come in. I was kind of thinking, I'm pretty sure I know what to look for, but I just, since I was already out anyway, I was like, I could easily, if I need to go there. They weren't really able to tell me anything. <laughs> I think they must not be allowed to like, tell you like definitely that you don't need to come because they, pro they probably want to avoid the case of someone, maybe something probably, this is my opinion. They want to likely avoid the case where they say, oh, no, you don't have to come in. And then it ends up being serious. And then someone like, I don't know, comes after them. But in the end, what it, when they try, they say, oh, you know, call us with any questions in the prenatal course I'm taking. But I'm like, so far when I've called them, they haven't really been able to tell me anything. <laughs> it's like, do you think I should come in? Well, I can't really say. <laughs> Okay, I guess if you can't really say, it's probably a no without, like, wanting to actually say no. <laughs> so, I figure, they had asked, like, you know, has the baby moved? And I'm like, well, no, but it happened, like, you know, two minutes ago, right? And, in fact, she did move later in the day. It was totally fine. But, had to end, was your belly involved at all? And I was like, no, like, because I kind of fell on my left like at an angle, like just a beetle just flew in. Anyway, um, <laughs> so basically, where was I? So basically, I went home after my errands that I finished doing because the library was like the first one. Well, I honestly started to get a bit dizzy, actually, when I was kind of nearing my last errand. I have to say, like, I, I was dizzy for the next, like, three hours. And so I just, like, I laid out on the balcony. And my husband helped out with dinner. And I just went, I was going to, like, do up, like, oven potatoes. And we just were like, you know what, let's just do smokies and, like, french fries. <laughs> I wasn't feeling well, honestly. And... I don't know if it was like a combination of, I don't know if it had something to do with that I was dehydrated or what, or just something random where like my leg gave out. Because to be honest, that does happen to me sometimes. <laughs> There's always my left leg, but like, and I mean not frequently, but like it happens where I'm walking and then suddenly my left leg gives out. <laughs> but I don't usually like fall. Well, this time I went straight down, so... That was unfortunate. Then uh, a couple times this week, I actually had belly button pain too. That like cramp or contraction that I've mentioned in the past, like right in the center of the belly button. And I can't seem to find anyone else that has shared this 
like uh, sensation I've asked on my Ovia app. Um, I've asked on here if anyone has. If you're watching my channel for the first time and you have experienced that, please write in the comments because I'm kind of like, is it really only me that experiences this? Typically it lasts 10 minutes and it's actually quite strong, but like usually I have to like sit and stop what I'm doing actually and sit, sit like very straight. But this week, luckily it lasted a lot less, like the two times that it happened. One was at, well, last Wednesday at 30 weeks and then one was yesterday at 30 weeks and six days and it was a lot lighter because also yesterday well it was when I was driving home from doing the groceries and I was like oh, oh. <laughs> I was prepared to pull over if I had to like honestly because it's the kind of thing where I'm like I'm not gonna be driving if that comes on but I did manage to get home it wasn't super intense but actually lo and behold that night my husband looked at my belly button and he was like, hey, it's flipped out. Not completely still yet, but like you're really almost there. It's super close. Then basically uh, for 30 weeks and four days, which was on Sunday, I don't know, for, for whatever reason, I just felt a bit melancholy that day. I, I don't. I don't know if it was like stuff with the virus going around in the news. I don't know. Probably. <laughs> uh, I was probably watching like depressing news things on YouTube. I can't honestly remember. But, and then I felt a bit like kind of mellow, you know, laid back that day too. It did pass a bit later, like that melancholy feeling, or at least mostly, but... Yeah, I don't know. I, I just kind of felt a bit eh, that day. Then on Monday, I felt nauseous again. Like I had to go get my blood drawn in the morning. And it, like I woke up at six to go to the bathroom. And then I couldn't fall asleep because I needed to wake up, I think like 40 minutes later. And you know how, like for me at least, if I wake up within like 20 minutes of when I have my alarm goes off, like forget it, you're not falling back asleep again. 30 minutes, 40, like there's a chance, but it's like not really that likely. Whereas if it's like an hour, yeah, I can probably fall asleep again. Well, that day I definitely could not fall asleep again. And then the baby woke up and she was kicking me <laughs> to... So, but I also was feeling off, like I felt, I felt like something was up with my stomach, to be honest, like kind of had gas going on, and honestly, that day, I had such an upset stomach, I don't know why it like was an all day thing, starting from like when I woke up, my husband was like, are you nervous, and this was before I went to the hospital, I'm like, I mean, no, like I'm not, I'm not nervous, but... I don't know, like, like maybe he's like, were you worried you were going to miss the alarm? I, I guess maybe subconsciously, I mean, you never know, but, because I am kind of like that, but, where like, if I know that I have to wake up early, I like, at, a, at an unusual time from like my typical schedule, then like, I will not be able to like, kind of wake up calmly basically i'll like wake up through the night and like make sure that i'm not missing the alarm but for whatever reason that day i had an upset stomach and i also felt nauseous like but not at the appoint at the appointment which is good because the last time that i went for that like kind of monthly blood draw which actually it had been like a couple months since i had done that because the last time they'd said go immediately and then this time they said go in three weeks so it ended up being a while and I had felt like really like fainting in the last time that I went and just because they had us wait for a while and they were super behind also this time like we have this thing where you can at the hospital you can reserve the your time basically and so I had made a note and said okay don't because I used to book like the exact time. <laughs> it was like, I don't know, 8.06. And the last time that I had gone, 
I they they were like fifteen minutes delayed, and I was like, okay, I can't I can't do that time anymore because like I get I have time to just get like sick, like I feel because you can't eat before you go right and. This time I said, okay, from now on, go book like, you know, no later than 750. So I had booked 750, but they, it was like 25, they were 25 minutes late that day. And I was like, well, thank goodness I booked 750 <laughs> because <sighs> like, and I think what the issue was, was there was a bunch of people, me included, that came with the doctor's, like, notes that were handwritten, and they couldn't read them. And that was actually the issue, because also, for me, when I got there, she was like, oh my god, why? like, she wasn't mad with me, but, like, <laughs> she was like, what's with this morning, like, the staplers out, everyone that comes up to me has got this, like, red, like, prescription form where the doctors write it and, and she had to like ask her colleagues like what does this say like I can't read it. I couldn't read it either she asked me and I'm like what? I don't know what that one says in the bottom and then she was having issues because it wouldn't accept like the exemption code because she probably couldn't read what the doctor had written and like why like some the once I think they gave me and the whole time I've gone to the doctor, one that's printed out. Like, I don't understand why they don't just do that all the time. But whatever. So that was basically the issue. Because it wasn't the issue of where they were actually taking people's blood. Because they were like, oh, come on, people, you know, we're open. And they would look and, like, there's, like, a total backup of people, like, waiting to be called up to, like, the the first area where they like accept you and you pay if you have to and so then the other nurse was like uh there isn't actually anyone so that was a bit uh not so but anyway yeah i felt uh nauseous after that so when i came home i don't know it has gotten hot again like i mentioned so honestly that could be the reason to why i had my stomach so off why i felt nauseous and then yesterday at 30 weeks and 6 days, I had an earache. Man, I had to stick like cotton pad, cotton ball all, all day in my ear because it was really bad. Like, and it always is this ear, honestly. And like at lunch, I could barely even eat the pasta because I could barely open my mouth. And, you know, it was just like that, like sharp pain at some points that made me go like <sighs> and also when I went out to do groceries and it was still like that like it didn't pass until the evening I put even though I had put drops in too and they didn't really do much of anything in fact I had put them in and I swear it made them worse <laughs> for several hours and that day it was kind of crazy yesterday because I got home and then I like unpacked my groceries for like 50 minutes I don't know I needed a lot of groceries and then the a storm this crazy storm came up and actually it mostly like the worst of it skipped us like it went over to the next town but it did still like do heavy rain here later later on but I had to spend like 15 minutes like taking Picking up things like I really shouldn't be picking up like our flower pots and like our lounge chair on the balcony because my husband wasn't home yet because it was like 520 I don't know and because there was this crazy wind that suddenly came up it was like like I was worried we had the awning out and I was worried that it was gonna like pull the awning off and so my mother-in-law and I, because my mother-in-law lives in the um, house, in the apartment below us, basically. We were running around. It had tried to knock over my blueberry plant. It knocked over a pepper plant of ours. It knocked over and took out of the vase. So my pepper plant, but also my mother-in-law's orchid. Like, and she was like, where did it go? And it was like off by the fence. And... <laughs> I was like crazy I had to move my car to like a more protected area and because it doesn't go in the garage there's not really space 
and it was like crazy. And this was all before we had like my prenatal course that evening and my husband was able to attend this one because it was like from six to eight. And so they had like a neonatologist, whatever. I don't know if that's even a word in English, but like they say a neonatologo. I, I think that that would be the translation, <laughs> neonatologist. A, a newborn doctor basically, right? And it was really good, you know, super informative. He cleared up basically everyone's doubts. Usually there's like a half an hour worth of questions after this class, but this one like pretty much almost no one had questions, just this one girl, it was really thorough. And I learned that officially the, the question that I had brought up in previous videos about like, I wasn't really sure like about this whole swaddling thing. I guess they don't do it here. I don't know if it's maybe a European thing. I guess they don't. And in North America they do. I mean, those things change from country to country, but basically they don't advise people like at all to swaddle their babies here. And then I went on the Ovia app and I learned that also in the UK they don't. So, uh, okay, <laughs> I guess I won't. Uh, so basically we had bought this week a sleep sack, a newborn sleep sack. So we're going to basically go that route and uh, it's supposed to arrive tomorrow. And then I'm waiting on another one with these cute pink zebras, but it's out of stock right now. So I'm just going to wait another like month and a half. If at that point it is still not available, then I'll order something else. But the other one, in the meantime, I've got on my like wish list. So I guess what the deal, just to kind of return to that argument for a minute, is I guess in in Italy, I mean, I can't say all of Europe because <laughs> I mean, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, I guess they said more in like the cold countries. This was his explanation, I guess, but they kind of wrap in the swaddle, but he said that um, actually, at least for Italy, for the Italian health system, they say that the baby's legs should be able to move at all times. Because I guess it's like better for their hip development. So anyway, I'll go with that. You know, that's where I live. So I'm going to go with what they say. And my husband's happy. He likes the sleep sack idea. He didn't really want me to swaddle her in the first place because... He thought that it looked like uncomfortable for the baby and anyway, whatever. So problem solved, I guess. So good. Okay. <laughs> that was the goal with, I was hoping the doctor would resolve that because I was really confused. And this update is getting way too long. I didn't realize that I had just so much going on this week, but basically I will show you the bump now. All right, so new dress, the pink one. I started to notice it was like <laughs> turning to be a bit too predictable. Luckily, it's actually not even uh, in my closet yet. I still have to like iron it. But here is the bump for my 30 week update. You can <laughs> visibly see my belly button sticking out. And I know this is more like an evening dress, but honestly, I just wanted something cool, <laughs> so here we go. All right, well that uh, concludes this week's update. Uh, one thing I just wanted to add is I did have a request from a subscriber asking if I would be interested in doing a Q&A. So um, I can totally do a get to know you Q&A if anyone has questions, drop them in the comments below. If I get enough questions, then I will totally make a video. So, okay guys, I will see you guys next week with my next update. Bye!